Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today we celebrate the release of an album that really made music history without ever being a hit. And there are these interesting albums whose influence from a technical point of view, technical mu meaning music technique and the technology behind recording and engineering. <clears throat> Some of these albums make great strides in terms of pushing both of those things forward and as a result, become very influential, even though the actual albums never sell huge and never become particularly household name worthy. And one such album was a 1973 collaboration between Robert Fripp of King Crimson and Brian Eno, famous for being in Roxy Music. Now, both of these men were famous for experimentation. King Crimson was no ordinary band, even by the standards of early 70s prog rock. And that's saying quite a lot. Uh, they were highly dissonant, very improvisational. There was a kind of darkness and somberness to them that other bands that were a bit more showy or even playful didn't have. And Brian Eno was, of course, the one who brought uh, the avant-garde experimentation to the suave sophistication of Roxy Music. And Brian Ferry, of course, brought the suave sophistication. Eno brought the experimentation. Eno eventually left and went on to become one of the pioneers of synth and ambient music. Now, this Frippin' Eno album called No Pussyfooting is very much in that ambient genre, and it makes use of Frippatronics, a type of recording and live performance technology that Robert Fripp invented, involving a guitarist harmonizing with him or herself on a perpetual loop tape. And this is something that is now done quite easily in the digital realm. But at the time, it was something that was quite sophisticated and took a lot of thinking in terms of how to rig up an otherwise standard uh, Revox tape machine to create this kind of live delay that you can essentially play with and overlay in a live and improvisational environment. And this album had all of that type of thing all over it. Again, it's very ambient. It's very much synth and technology driven. It's not, it's dissonant at times, but it also has some of those comforting harmonies that have become associated with the ambient work of Brian Eno. Now, why was it so influential? It influenced the trajectory of electronic music, of ambient music, and even of some broader trends in instrumental music for the next 20, 30, and in some ways, even 40 years beyond that. This was a 70s era that sort of was defined by Fripp and Eno, Tangerine Dream, later on Kraftwerk, where people were using technology to make sounds that sounded otherworldly and that were performed well outside the contexts of your traditional rock, pop, or soul, or jazz band, for that matter. And as such, this album was an instant underground classic, and it's, it's sort of standing among the musical underground has only grown since then, even though Fripp arguably did stuff that was somewhat more commercial later when he got back to King Crimson, and Eno too um, arguably had even ambient albums that were more commercially minded than this. But this was an album that set a lot in motion, and Fripp and Eno, of course, remained good friends for many years after. So if you want to chill out and surprise your friends with just how sophisticated you are, put this album on. Or if you just want to learn about what a, a, an ambient genre that has become so ubiquitous, what it was like in its nascent earliest days, put this album on and you can see why when you do that it was very ahead of its time. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.